Now, the National Treasury explained how clever maize traders cheated the Kenyan government out of nearly 17 billion shillings since just five months of the hate of maize shortage last year after taking advantage of a tax waiver to flood the Kenyan market with maize. Cartels then went ahead to buy from the NCPB, or rather uh, the same maize they had sold to the agency, only this time at subsidized prices, making a killing almost without breaking any law. A Senate committee grilled Treasury officials on this scandal, even as the agriculture Culture Cabinet Secretary uh, was asked that uh, the individuals who cheated the system be investigated. And Oxycolia has that report. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee on the Maize Crisis began its investigations into the two billion maize scam Wednesday. First to appear were representatives of the National Treasury. In the process of grilling, ministry officials admitted that the issue of illegal payments to maize farmers and traders might be traced back to the time duty-free importation was okayed between May and October. These traders would have paid this much. They would have paid 16 Yes, at the billion. Top 16 billion. Yes. According to the government then, domestic supply of maize had fallen to an unprecedented level. And so without the duty-free importation, consumer prices of maize flour would have hit the roof. So we had two types of maize. This opened the door for the loads of hunger. From briefcase contractors who offered supposed long-term solutions to the maize shortage to maize cartels that cashed in on duty-free imports, exploiting loopholes and the system. First, the National Treasury, KRA and the Ministry of Agriculture did not put a limit on the quantity of maize that was to be shipped into the country during the period. Did they do a research on how much we needed? As Treasury, we could not know the quantities that were, were required, so it was now the business of Ministry of Agriculture. Secondly, the Gazette notice that gave a note to the duty-free import stipulated that any person was allowed to import maize. Senators in the committee questioned the significance of the phrase any person in that context. The outcome was the flooding of the Kenyan market with cheap maize from the non commercial countries. Come October 2017, at the time of the expiry of the initial Gazette notice, an extension was sought and approved. Kenyans were busy in the electioneering period. A repeat presidential election was to be staged later in the month. What did they say? The ministry said that there was no maze. That, that the, the situation is not where we are. So we, they said we, the situation had not stabilized. stabilized. So they still needed yeah. some more maze to come. Again, the same boardroom, the same number of people? We, we, we need that letter. Mm. We need that letter because that is a, that is a very dangerous precedent. Yeah. The tricks by the maize cartels became even more interesting at this point. According to Treasury, the maize barons imported the commodity duty-free as per the Gazette notice in bulk and later sold the commodity to NCPB in the name of farmers at 3,600 shillings per bag. And when the government subsidized maize purchased from NCPB for millers to produce cheap flour, the very same traders bought back from the NCPB the same maize they sold at 3,600, buying at the new subsidized price of 2,000 shillings per bag. So they made a cool 1,600 shillings per bag from the government. The agriculture CS Mangi Kiunjuri won some of the payments to such traders investigated. Let's pick on one of the farmers paid, Celestine Chepchirchir. She supplied NCPB with 150,386 bags of maize and made 383 million shillings. Each passing day, new details about the maize scam are emerging. But what is clear is that traders and millers made a fortune during that time, importing cheap maize and selling at higher prices to the National Cereals and Produce Board. Enoxicolia, Citizen TV, in the county of Nairobi.